Tower. Now, I asked uh, Will, see, uh, now that's, it, that's a good cut because it's not on top of the actual image. Day, but I asked uh, Will if he had any control over the camera placement is, in the room. Um, and he said he did. Really did he have control over where it was? To the degree. To the degree. Yeah, he couldn't move around. He had to be in one step in place. You like this? It's the first one um, we've ever done, it's so it's, it's hard it to know. Because you're it's quite static, them, but it's a training video, well so it's difficult to know where you can be experimental and where you're kind of playing. In this particular kind of um, arena, right. it's probably... The point is, is the fact that, that like, that's what the, fund is, is the shot is the wide shot. And Right, and it doesn't bring me into you and what you're saying. I'm not drawn into what you're saying. I can't agree. I feel I'm in the back of the room. It's quite static, isn't it? It needs not, not the staticness, the distance. Do you not feel that? It feels like it's kind of like a way. Now, sure enough, if I'm like you guys and I'm sitting there and everything, and um, I would be away from you. My point is, is the fact that. But if you get this right, I think you're halfway there. My point is, even though Will is over there, right, I can, I can, I can see it from, from the shot, right? So you're here, and Will's over there, and everything, and he's got your screen. How important is that? Well, that, that screen isn't, because there's nothing on there. The, I the know. Actual, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm drawn to it, though. It's a big space in the middle of the film. Yeah. And nothing's on it. I'm drawn to that. Is that a window? I want to go outside. Right? I'm drawn to that element behind you. But here's the screen, right? And I can't even see it. So my point is you are looking off screen like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not even I'm not even here. I'm looking over there. Yeah. Right. I who eggs bacon my shopping list. <laughs> right? I'm just saying visual. What I mean by visual grammar is, is that the image tells a story. If you think about it like art direction. Right? You've heard the word art direction. Yeah? But art direction in films is very key. It's about what if the person who's in charge of every prop that's in the scene, why is this sitting here? Why do you have three cups? What kind of lighter do you have? What kind of phone are you using? Yeah? All of these things are important to an art director as well as to a director. A director will go as far as to say, I'm going to have three people sitting here listening to a lecture, all right, and everything like that, and, you know, um, yeah, and, uh, paper pens, you know, all that stuff. And an art director will go, well, it's a lecture, yeah, da 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 And, you know, they will choose what kind of cups. They will choose what kind of phone. They will choose what kind of video for the editing is on there. And when they've made that choice of props, then the director will agree. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you might say, whoa, that's too deep for us. <laughs> but it's not in the sense where if you examine the grammar of this visual and what it's saying, all I see is a big white board. I don't really see you too much, right? I see an element behind you, and I see you looking off screen. And what I do is I'm drawn to that, and I drift off screen. And the only thing I'm actually paying attention to is when you put in the cutaways and I might go, oh, what's that? Yeah? Yeah. Now, okay, this is the first one, all right? So what would draw me in more is changing the camera position from over there to over here, right? Now, what it is is you keep facing this, but in a film, you keep facing away because you're talking to your audience. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? So, we who are watching you, <laughs> everything's happening outside of you. Makes me more interested in what's happening outside of you. So, if you're dead, if you're dead on, meaning like, I asked Will, could he have shot the audience? Yeah? He said, well, I mean, yeah, we did. We got interviews and stuff like that. So, then I'm wondering, how come they're not in the shot? If you had permission to shoot them, why aren't they there? Whether over the shoulders to show that you're actually training someone, because you look like you're by yourself. It's like Billy Nomes, right? <laughs> yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and then and the thing is, it's funny. You know, I know nobody really wants to hear it, but I mean, I actually studied this, and, um, you know, you know? Yeah. So, I'm not even talking about the editing, <laughs> I'm just talking about the shot and about camera placement. 
So if you have control, is that like now the difference that it would make if the camera's over the, your shoulders over there and people are actually listening, writing down what you're talking about. So we have a wide shot of you there. So now you're facing us in the same camera placement as this. And the screen is behind you, which we can see, which is right, not really important because you're going to cut away to it. Right? So he doesn't have to get the screen, but he doesn't need an empty screen. That's the point. You know what I mean? So like, so now you're there as like a news reporter, as like a commentator, as like a speaker who is telling me something that I need to know. I need to know these facts. So when you turn, each turn cuts to the actual um, um, slate of the, of the fact. I don't want to see you turn and then you're like, you're talking and you're talking over your turn. Because then what happens there is, I mean. Uh, yeah, I'll probably change light. No worries. Then what happens there is, is the fact of that, you know, um, again, I'll just be paying attention to your turn as opposed to what you want me to pay attention to. If you feel it's important to look at, then so should I. You understand what I mean? Yeah. I mean, do you understand that? I mean, visually, that is what it will say to you. It is that this PowerPoint is important. I'm telling you, and what it does is, it, 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 um, the importance of like the close-up and the mid-shot is that it draws people in. Yeah. Just a quick question. If you were to move that angle, uh, which I, I agree with, I can see the sense in that hundred percent. Um, that white screen and potentially that window, is that still a problem? It won't be a problem because you move the angle, you won't really see it. The white screen will just be her white background. Okay, so there's no need to like worry about trying to fill that space by thinking what's going on there. No, because what what happened is like let's look at it right like uh, if it was like a storyboard. And I only have very limited paper, so I'll do it on this one. <laughs> it's that once she's here, right, as opposed to there on the side, looking halfway, that white screen will then cover her like this. Yeah. Now, that's still a bad shot. All right? How do we make it a better shot? Closer in. Closer in to the lines. And this is what we call a frame composition. Because what you're doing is everywhere you are has lines. Yeah? And if you look at television, you will see that they would never shoot a shot like that. It, it's like what they call like the rule of thirds, which is a complicated explanation about why people place a, 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 do a camera position there. But what I just like to call it is framing by the lines. So in that aspect, I wouldn't want to see that line because I'd be paying attention to where it's going. You know what I mean? You, you say, no, I wouldn't. I'd pay attention to you. But you would. <laughs> because what will happen is, is that all I've seen is, if I'm standing here, all I've seen is this line coming out my head. Hey, why is the line coming out of his head? Oh, no. <laughs> now you can say, hey, I can't control where people move. Right? As you can see, I'm moving all about. But you can't control the framing of this. So, you have straight lines that you could easily frame in, and she'll still be in your shot, right? So she's framed in here, and she's framed in here. Now, there is no busyness around her. All there is is a white wall, which is fantastic. Yeah? It's fantastic because, based on where she's standing and in the estimation, she probably still has enough space that you actually could put her own PowerPoint that is up there on here. And you could get this shot. So, in the shot that we said was a good camera placement, right, a frame composition, you actually could make that. All you needed to do was move from here to there, and you have a whole Why is the two cameras besides cutaway options? Why is the two cameras a better option? Case one. What? What? In case one breaks down, you got to no, up. No, no, no. Personally, that's good for me. <laughs> in case one breaks down, I, I, the camera I, breaks down, it's, done, it's gone. I, I personally like it because it's a bit of visual stimulation on such a boring thing. There you, there you go. There you go. It's a bit of visual grammar. You know, um, stimulation, it, it says something more. Also, too, is, is that it helps your edit. 
it makes your edit a little bit longer because you got two cameras and trying to sync them up and then you know get it right. But it also is, is the fact that, that one is you can cut to the other camera and chop down what people are saying. Even though what you said that yeah they want all of it. You know, like I, I did uh, one of these type of videos for World Change and it came out to be like 30 minutes long. You know, and I said I can make you a shorter cut, but you know, I had to respect the fact that I, we had to interview the whole team and everybody had a list of questions. And then we did the same thing where, you know, you cut the uh, pictures or video and all that other kind of stuff. But what you want to be able to do is, is that you need control, especially when the natural speaker talks. You know, they kind of either tend to go on, they kind of like are unsure about what they say, so they start to do a lot of ums, which I noticed that nobody did that, which is either a uh, good uh, testament to them knowing their jobs or their confidence in front of the camera or having a script. But then there are people who do know their jobs, <laughs> right? Hate the camera. They go, um, um, I want to make sure I, um, um, uh, did I cover that? Uh, uh, yeah, is that all right? You know, and all of that. So you get all of that, and then phew, that's really bonkers to edit. But either way, with the second camera option, you are able to cut away from all of that. You know, um, if you got it, use it. But the main reason why you want a second camera is, is that you actually would need something that you could cut away too. Say for like your training video. It's not just a cutaway option of the second camera. It's the fact that I film the people who actually are listening. You know, so that way it gives a more give and take about what's going on. And that makes the film much more dynamic as far as watching. You can't look at training videos as, uh, as corporate videos, boring, people don't really want to watch it, we have to have it for our archives. You should always look at trying to make this interesting. Even though what they always say to you about corporate videos, um, you know, like that are strictly for promotional purposes or advertisers or, or, or for our business funders, is, is that it has to have the information and it can't be creative at all. You know, we don't want the camera right like, zooming down the hallway. <laughs> you know, want the low angle shot of someone or, you know, getting in the car, the car speeds off. And it's like, you know, it's a shame, you know, um, if it shows something about the organization. You know, I mean, like, the idea for the real change one that we did was the fact that, that because their outreach service is that why should you just have them sitting down talking to the camera where if their work is about engagement, it's about being in the community. It's about going into other places. So the idea was for them to actually get their own camera, as I suggested, so that way they will actually show themselves going out so on the road. What you're talking about <clears throat> pretty much is like, and it makes all the difference in the world. It's a montage, mm -hmm. right? Now, the thing about the montage is that, you know, you probably heard the word. Everybody knows what it is, right? A collection yeah. of clips, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, so, so yeah. everything that you just said, what's your name? Ian. Yeah, everything that Ian just said is great, but it just sounds like, oh, that's yeah. not a word. <laughs> you know? Also, who wants to see that, right? You know, um, you know, somebody called this, somebody saw the Forbes, somebody did this, you take somebody over here, da -da 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 -da. and, but what you do is, is that if you film it with a sense of creating a montage. It's like what I said to uh, Will about shooting to edit. And this takes a careful plan in a little way. Yeah? Good. Let's say, for example, everything that you just uh, stated about from the process of someone coming in mm -hmm. to what happens to their experience here to when they leave. Mm -hmm. It becomes what we call like a beginning, middle, and end, mm -hmm. right? It begins with somebody walking through the door and ends with somebody leaving. But what happens to all the filling inside, right? And how do we get all of that covered? And we actually, you know, you spend a day filming all of that, and then you cut it down into a montage. So now that montage could be, you know, just kind of like, like a music video type of montage, yeah? Music video is really just a collection of clips, as I just said, you know? Now, most of them are storyline or narrative based, but the story is somebody's experience at decor, yeah? 
And because that experience could be so vast and it could be different for different people, you only just want to show boom, 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 various different people's experiences of it. So you have to film that, get the shots, do your frame composition, you know, da 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 da. And then in the edit, you cut it into a music video piece. Now, you think in music video where music video uh, goes anywhere from like 30, uh, more than 30 seconds, but let's just say it goes anywhere from 30 seconds to 3 minutes. So, like, you can shoot all day, and then you can just squeeze all that together into that three minute song. Yeah. Now, what you want to be careful of is one, copyright the song, right? Um, two, you also want to be careful of the song overtaking the actual image. So, what you want to use a lot is instrumental music. But you want the instrumental music to be based on the feeling that you want people to have. Let's say, for example, like, uh, you know, where I work in Liverpool and I'm doing, say, like, uh, with uh, the BAME communities, and I could be like an African elders group or it could be young people or whatever, blah, 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 then I would think about that when it comes down to the music style. You know, uh, you know, uh, some kind of funky beat, some kind of drumming beat or whatever you know, uh, that will give us that essence, like, yeah, yeah, you know, I feel like culturally or diversified way, I'm in a different area, <laughs> right? And uh, so I'll show you some examples of what I've done in that aspect. A fly on the wall is, again, kind of like, you know, like at the office, you know, uh, whether it's Ricky Gervais' version or Steve Carell's American version. But it has that kind of sense of, I want to show the way a place works. And the camera is just kind of like, you know, a fly on the wall. It's over here, it's over there, it's in those kind of like weird corners, you know. <laughs> and, you know, and what they try to do is because it's a spoof, they always have people making those aside to the camera. You know, what's going on, you know. Um, but you don't have to do, go that far. You still understand the processes that it's like as a documentary film of a workplace. Um, so you can always do that, because you can just take your camera, you know, handheld, <laughs> you know, and it's like, hey, hey, you know, boom, 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 film you doing your work, hey, I'm doing my work, can I get away from me, <laughs> right? And it shows a bit of personality of the organization, you know, um, and I'll show you an example of that as well, where they felt, oh, that's too much personality, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or I'm trying to make this for our funders, and I'm like, yeah, well, the funders will actually think you're fun. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's kind of like, you know, you're, 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 you're happening, you're hip, you're, you know, but it's not, not we just rather be just tilted, just rather I just talk to the camera. And, you know, the, I was like, yeah, well, anybody could just film you doing that. Yeah. But that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're the client. So, either way, you shoot to edit. So, I'm going to just show you some, some quick examples. Now, this was actually um, a lecture in Manchester, right? But... Just to give you an example, like what kind of shots that you should grab onto, uh, and everything like that. And I won't show you the whole thing. I'll just like show you the opening montage. So uh, the things, the people, and this is really just going around with one camera, just kind of like. Capture like yeah, people selling crafts, but it's like it's a lecture about uh, this man who's been on um, death row in the Angola Free, and they made a movie about him called The Land of the Free. Samuel L. Jackson actually did the uh, narration, and because uh, these three guys were considered Black Panthers, and so this guy is the only one that's free now after 27 years. So. And two of the things still in there. That's him. And so, but, and then this is like, uh, you know, the Q&A lecture afterwards. Now, with that open the montage, you're trying to just set the scene, which is what you could have done with your training video. Because then your bosses and your clients will say no. Ah, oh, dude, man, that's a bit much. Because you still will have all the talking that you had. But you're also trying to say, oh, we're trying to show what B Corp does. So with the idea, yeah, you're just tacking on to the beginning mm -hmm. something that draws you into B Corp. Then you tell me all about B Corp. Now imagine you saw that at the opening of your piece. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? 
And now I'm kind of like, yeah, wow, well, Pico, they do a lot of things. They work with uh, a lot of different communities or different types, or they go out and they do this kind of engagement. Whatever it is that your ideas are, you know, but as you can see, I'm just going around filming before the lecture starts, and then I cut it together into like about 30 seconds.